Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits and even ethnicity results of an Anatolian Neolithic farmer man from Barsin in Turkey. His mitochondrial lineage is K1B and his Y-DNA is G2A. Nowadays the Y-DNA G2 is very common in uh, Caucasus. Now let's go ahead and explore where he is from. This is the location that the skeleton was found in. And now let's go ahead and move on to his actual autosomal DNA results. We're gonna start with his, yes, that's him. We're gonna start with his Nashakot results. This is what he scores with Nashakot. It looks like he's predicted to have light brown or dark brown eyes, uh, kind of a low likelihood for hazel eyes, uh, and absolutely 0% likelihood for any other eye color. I just wanna make sure it's the, the right sample. Hold on. 1103, 1103, yes, it's the right sample. So, okay, this individual has got uh, light brown eyes, it looks like black hair, and it looks like light or fair skin. So he's got light skin, black hair, and light brown eyes. This is his predicted eye color with the web version of Nashakot. This kind of a uh, iris picture. And when it comes to his hair texture, he's actually predicted to have curly hair. Number two comes wavy hair. Number three actually comes kinky hair. And the least likely hair texture for him is straight hair. So he definitely probably doesn't have straight hair. Let's go ahead and see his uh, ethnic calculator results. For the ethnic calculator, and this was done with 336 SNPs, he is closest to funnel beakers from Ansarve. Funnel beakers are Neolithic farmers in um, Sweden. Followed by that are bell beakers. Followed by that is global or amphora culture. Followed by that is Bulgarian, Spanish, Anatolian, Iron Age, and then British, Russian, Assyrian, and bell beaker from Britain. So it looks like he's quite Central European farmer. Uh, you know, funnel beaker and global around for he's quite similar to these central European farmers and bell beakers. Very interesting to see. Let's go ahead and see what uh, genotypes contributed to his score for eye color and hair color. And it looks like he does not have BH1, does not have BH2, does not have BH3, but he does have heterozygous genotype in BH4, which is very surprising. Now, um, I was under the impression that BH4 somehow was most common in Yamnaya and then. Now it's most common in Bosques, but I'm thinking maybe it's just that uh, these specific uh, Anatolian farmers that made their way into into being ancestors of Bosques and megalithic culture in general uh, had BH4, whereas the uh, Neolithic farmers that became global or amphora people did not have BH4 because none of the global or amphora people have BH4. So this is what I'm thinking. Uh, the origin of BH4, where it, where it came from, I'm not really sure. I don't really have any theories about that, but it seems to be present in some Anatolian Neolithic farmers and not uh, absolutely absent among them, as I was believing previously. So look, it seems that it's found among, among both farmers and Yamnians, uh, and uh, it's just that for some reason it's not found among global or amphora people. Let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a very low risk score for schizophrenia, below average score for type 2 diabetes, slightly high score for Alzheimer's. We're going to explore that and see why it is what it is. And below average score for multiple sclerosis and zero risk variance for breast cancer out of four. Really low quality file. Um, typically, if you took a MyHeritage at 23 and me, you would have like 20 risk variance out of uh, like or... I mean, 20 variants in total or like 30 variants in total. So zero risk variance out of four is an indicator that the file is kind of low quality. Uh, eight risk variance for testicular cancer out of 12. Once again, really low quality. But this is actually somewhat uh, alarming. Eight risk variance out of 12 is somewhat alarming. Zero risk variance out of six, six for celiac disease. Pretty typical. Uh, zero out of GSS out of zero. Uh, once again, low quality file. Unfortunately, not a lot of the relevant stuff is found in the file here. And one risk variance for Crohn's out of 16. Pretty typical result. Once again, typically if you took a 23andMe or Ancestry or MyHeritage, you would see uh, 24 or 28 for Crohn's disease in total. All right. Let's go ahead and check his monogenic traits. It looks like he's got heterozygous genotype in Komets Valmet variation, so intermediate between uh, Warrior and Warrior. However, Warrior genotype in MAOA, so uh, overall he's probably more Warrior than Warrior, uh, which means less dopamine in the system, quicker dopamine reuptake. It looks like he's also got two derived no-go learning variants, DRD2 Pro for 19 Pro, so he's got less dopamine D2 receptor sites. Uh, those two together uh, are the recipe of ADHD. So you have less dopamine in the system and less dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, you're probably going to have ADHD, but I don't have an ADHD risk score here. I don't have an ADHD calculator here, so uh, 
you know, it is what it is. It looks like he's got this genotype in DRD4, which is implicated in a higher likelihood of schizophrenia, but we're not, we don't really care about all that. I was just looking for uh, the 5 HTTLPR stuff, which doesn't seem to be in this file. Okay, so he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. So if you took an ancestry test, they would say, hey, uh, you're likely to be lactose intolerant. For the empathy gene, it looks like he's not genotyped for the most important variation, but he's got two sociopath variants in this variation, which I think is the second most important one. It looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes, really good to see, and it looks like he is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, really good to see. So for Alzheimer's, he's not genotyped for the main variations in APOE, which are by far the most important ones when it comes to the risk score, but, 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 he does have this genotype, this genotype right here, which leads to significantly higher odds of Alzheimer's, and the odds ratio for that is actually pretty high, it's like 3 point something. So for multiple sclerosis, it looks like he does not have risk variance for that, and he actually has this genotype, which protects from multiple sclerosis, really good to see. Which, by the way, I'm noticing this a lot, it seems to be present in a lot of these Anatolian farmers. Okay, we're gonna skip myopia, it looks like he does not have micro P, really good to see. Impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete. Rather than sprinter, all right, no fat gene variants in FTOs, RS99, 609, so no variants which predispose to obesity. Uh, one variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCN90, kind of atypical, and no East Asian EDAR, also no East Asian Asian flusher mutation. So it looks like he doesn't really have any East Asian genetic traits. We're going to skip drug response. We're going to sp skip albinism in a typical traits panel. We're going to skip familiar Mediterranean fever. Actually, we're going to skip MTHFR as well. Now, for cancers, it looks like he's got, for testicular cancer, this genotype, which leads to higher risk of testicular cancer, and this genotype, which also leads to higher risk of testicular cancer. So when it comes to testicular cancer, his score was pretty high, and it's actually pretty legitimate, because the out of the three most important variations for testicular cancer, he's genotyped for two. Uh, it looks like he's got slightly lower risk of leukemia based on his genotypes here and here. We're going to skip rare diseases. Uh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna skip celiac disease, we're gonna skip allergies, we're gonna skip Crohn's. For Canavan, it looks like he has zero risk variants, but there's only one variation that he was genotyped for. It's not a very high quality file. And for HIV and AIDS panel, this is what I wanted to see, because I've noticed that a lot of these Anatolian Neolithic farmers have protective variants here, which protect from HIV. And uh, they are rare, they are really uncommon in modern people. So it surprises me that among these Anatolian Neolithic farmers, these protective variants are so common. For example, this individual has got two protective variants here, 90% reduction in HIV viral load. This uh, genotype has a frequency of like 4% among uh, general population, but it seems to be very, very prevalent among these Anatolian Neolithic farmers from Barson. I'm not sure why. So um, it seems that perhaps I'm just going to make a theory right now, which uh, may be completely wrong, but this genotype in Europeans might be somehow linked to Anatolian Neolithic farmer admixture. Uh, the protective variants in this variation which protect from HIV and cause a reduction in HIV viral load might be uh, linked to Neolithic farmer admixture in Europeans. This is just a theory I made based on what I'm observing here. Alright, that's pretty much all I want to say. Uh, thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed it, uh, leave a comment if you want to comment on something, and also, I want to remark that you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, goodbye.